look in the sink. Make you look better too. Larry Fedora, friend Take of the media. a lot more than some saw, and I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what y'all got? You got to settle on your number two quarterback yet? Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go with uh, Cade Fortin as our number two quarterback going into this game. And then well, is there a pecking order behind beyond that, or is it just however you need if you had to get to that point? Uh, I mean, we're we'll we play it by ear at that point and see what we need to do. What has he done that earned that spot? He's shown that he's grasped the game plan. He's uh, he's making good throws. He's made good decisions in practice, and uh, you know he's shown that he's capable of getting it done if he needs to. How about right guard? Right guard? I don't have to ask Cap after practice. I I, I don't know what he's uh, what he's decided. I know those guys been battling it out. They've been splitting reps. So, but I I just walked off the field, so I haven't talked to him yet. You guys increasingly comfortable with both guys, whoever? Yeah, I think so. There? I think uh, both of them are doing a nice job. They've been battling, you know, and so uh, it's trying to get consistency from any e either one of them. So once we get some consistency, I think he'll make a decision. Is that pretty crazy? He's potentially starting or at least playing a lot for a true freshman guy here in June at William Barnes. Yeah, I, I think so. I think uh, especially any kind of any kind of young guy that's going to play up front is very difficult. You know, so you you got to be pretty special to be able to uh, to get in the rotation as, as a freshman up front. When you have speed on the edge on offense and you, some guys that can take the top off of the defense, how much does that change what you can do with the rest of your offensive package? Well, I mean, you can stretch the field vertically, so you're going to you know create layers in the defense, and then you know we like to you know stretch the field horizontally to create vertical seams in the defense. So all you're doing is being able to take care of the I mean take advantage of the entire field. That's what we want to do. What's your confidence level at with the secondary overall as a unit this year as compared to last year on the same time? Uh, you 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 know you got, I mean we got guys that have played. I mean with uh, KJ and and uh, Miles Dorn and, and JK Britt, those guys have been out there a bunch, and then Patrice and uh, you know has gotten reps, and so I mean I, I feel good about them. I mean we don't we don't have uh, you know that uh, alpha dog uh, MJ Stewart back there who's you know who's had been killing it, but those guys as a unit have been doing a really good job. Are you confident or comfortable where you guys are going to California right Yeah, now? I am. I think we've, we're as prepared as we can be at this point. You know, we still have to polish things up tomorrow, and then, uh, you know, we'll have our walkthroughs and stuff on Friday. So we still have things to do mentally, but the physical part of it's pretty much done. It's been a you know, long, hot summer, and obviously it's been hot. How do you kind of rest your players ahead of a game like this? Is there anything special to do? Obviously, well, I think, yeah, I mean, it's it's something we've been doing, we yeah. do every day. I mean, it's about rest and recovery. Once we get off the field, everything is about recovering. And so whether it's uh, massages, whether it's uh, yoga or cryo or cold tubs or the stretching bands or, you know, all the different things that we do for recovery on a daily basis, you know, that's, it's, it's you know, that is the biggest part of what we do. Hydration, you know, eating right, making sure they're getting eight hours of sleep, all those things that we can do so that their bodies can recover and be at 100% on set. You don't have anything to adjust to that Bay Area weather? No, you know, because we really don't talk about the weather, so I haven't really thought about it. Really nice. what, what about Cal uh, makes you most nervous or? Well, I mean, you one, you got you got a uh, returning quarterback that threw for over 3,000 yards. You got the whole offensive line back. You got basically you got their offense back. So, uh, I mean, and it's their second year in the system, so they're going to be that much more comfortable with it. And then you got guys on defense that are playing really hard. I mean, and you watch that through the entire season. When you're watching them throughout the entire season, one thing they did was they played hard. And so it's their second year in the program. They're going to all feel that much more comfortable. The coaches are going to feel more comfortable with the guys they have, and they're going to know how to take advantage of the skill set that those guys have. I know that you never really are comfortable, but if you go back 12 months going into last year's opener, is there something about this team right now that gives you maybe a little bit more of a measure of comfort than, than what you had a year ago? Yeah, I would say, you know, our, our leadership, uh, the group has done a tremendous job. I mean, from Jan the first time we met in January all the way through now, those guys have been consistent. They've, uh, they've held themselves to a high standard. They are, they've been able to hold their peers uh, to a high standard. They've, they've held them accountable. And that's not easy to do. And so I'm, I'm proud of what those guys have done. Is there anything planned for Friday? Because I know you'll get in there Thursday after the evening. Is there anything to do? We have a full itinerary planned, yes. They'll do anything like fun or cool in, in the new area? Uh, the I, baffle team went to I, Facebook, for example. I look at everything we're doing as fun and cool. <laughs> I mean, you know, 
I don't know about the, but uh, I, I don't, we don't have anything special outside of our normal uh, travel plan, no. I'm going to answer your question. But I, I still think what we do is pretty fun and cool. <laughs> I would imagine you, in a perfect world you'd like to open it at home, but is there a benefit to going on the road and kind of seeing how your guys respond immediately out of the gate? you you got to look for the silver lining in every situation. So we're going on the road, so this is going to be our first opportunity because we know to be successful and reach our goals this year, we're going to have to be a good road team. So this is our first test on the road to find out, you know, if, if our plan – uh, for the, the preparation of not just playing the game, but everything that uh, that it entails in getting there also is good. So it'll it'll give us a good measure step. I, I asked you the other day about how anxious you are. Yep, um, pretty anxious. How about how excited are you to see what a lot of these guys have become as football players in the last uh, nine months? Well, anxious and ex excited and enthusiasm and passion, it's all together for me. I mean, anxiety, it's all part of it, you know. And But I am really excited to see – I'm really excited to see these guys get back out on the field and play together. That I, I really am excited because they put in a lot of work, and I think they're ready to go. When you talked about MJ last year, you talked about he was always the top guy in the GPS chart. Is there anybody who's kind of stepped up and kind of been at the top guy? You know what, we, we've actually we, – we got – we got some guys that are battling it every day with, uh, you know, Thomas Jackson and, and uh, uh, Daz Newsom and Trey Morrison and, and uh, I mean those guys every day. I'm, I'm concerned about their GPS numbers, yeah, because they they uh, they push themselves pretty hard. JJ McCargo up front is another one that uh, every day it's uh, it's questionable. So he's uh, he's pushing it hard. Coach JP talked about uh, Strobridge yesterday. It's a name we've heard a lot. Yeah. This whole game. What have you kind of seen from him kind of step up this year? That, that guy, you know, you, you don't – there's comfort level in knowing that he's going to show up every day and he's going to go as hard as he can every single day. You don't ever have to worry about that. He gives you the same thing every single time. There, when you talk about consistency, it's there. It's, it's I'm going to give you everything I got every single play when I'm on the snap. I mean, on the field. And uh, – you know, it's, it's been a joy to watch him all the way through spring ball and now because he brings it every single play that he's on the field. When he's off the field, he rests, and then when he goes back out, he brings it again every single play. Coach, how much um, better is the defensive line this year than it was last year at the start of the season? I'll, I'll tell you after the game, you know, <laughs> I, I, feel, uh, I feel good about these guys, but uh, we haven't done anything yet. I mean, the 2018 football team has put in a lot of work and, and a lot of effort and all of them, but we haven't done anything yet. So we're, we're still uh, we're still trying to build our resume. So we'll find out. So I, I imagine I imagine it's difficult to ignore what's happening on campus outside of football. So with the silent Sam stuff, I know last year you said you all had discussions about it. Have you all had discussions about it this yeah, year? Yeah, we, we haven't met as a team about it, but uh, I've had numerous conversations with players on the team at lunch and at dinner and when hanging out and those kind of things. So yeah, there, we're we're very aware of the situation, and we, you know, I, I've got complete faith in our administration that they'll uh, take care of the situation and make sure that it's right. Thanks, Coach.